And really, what we're talking about here is history that has been made in Trinidad and Tobago. Over the last week or so, events and circumstances took place that will be documented for many years to come with the visit of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan to Trinidad. And of course, this is part of a 2012 Caribbean Unity Tour. Because the key priority in this particular movement is the unification of peoples of the Caribbean. And this was the key objective of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in coming to the Caribbean at this time in particular. That we have brothers and sisters that were taken out of Africa, our traditional homeland, the place of our heritage, our legacy, and our glory. And we were brought across to the Western Hemisphere and stripped of our name, language, religion, culture, morals, folkways, laws, and norms. Made into slaves. Transformed from proud African people into Negroes. And have been given a state of mind that divides us, that splits us, that puts brother against brother, sister against sister, now unable to recognize our own family members, the fact that we are one, bonded under the same father, the same kith and kin. We are one people, but we were brought across here and put in all of these different zones. So now some of us are in Trinidad, some of us are in Jamaica. Some of us are in Grenada, Barbados, St. Vincent, St. Kitts, St. Lucia, Antigua. Some of us are in Cuba and Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, Haiti, Dominican Republic. Some of us are in Belize, Suriname, and Guyana. We're all across the Caribbean, but because of the state of mind and the methodology of division that has been indoctrinated within our heads, we no longer recognize each other as family. So now on the grassroots level, we have the responsibility to bring our peoples together once again. Remember, on the political level, in 1958, the different governments of different Caribbean countries tried to form the Federation of the West Indies, but it collapsed in four years. Then in 1968, we established the Caribbean Free Trade Area, known as CARIFTA. Then in 1973, through the Treaty of Chagaramas, on July the 4th, we established the CARICOM or Caribbean Community. And then in 1981, the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, the smaller islands in the Eastern Caribbean. And then in 1995, we established the Association of Caribbean States. Then in 2006, we launched the Caribbean Single Market and Economy. But the idea that gave birth to the CSME was actually formulated in Grand Anse in Grenada in 1989. But it was only launched in 2006. The question is, why did it take 17 years to implement the Caribbean single market and economy? And it still hasn't been fully implemented as yet. It is still in the draft stages. It is still in the process of being launched. And they just postponed the completion date from 2015 to an indefinite date. Why would they take 17 years? to begin to bring us together when they had the idea 17 years ago. And the reason for that is that I don't want to say you cannot trust the politicians, but what I can say is that it is certainly not a first priority on the part of the political entities throughout all of the Caribbean regions to ensure that Caribbean unity, the unification of the peoples, maybe even one day we will have one currency, one passport, one army, one police force, one standardized system of documents for all Caribbean citizens. Maybe we will get to the stage one day where, for the same reason that the United States of America is strong, because all of the states are united, maybe one day we will get to the stage of the United States of the Caribbean. Think of the Bahamas. Did you know that of all of the nations in CARICOM, yes, Trinidad is so rich and wealthy, but Trinidad has the second highest GDP. Do you know which Caribbean nation has the highest GDP? It is the Bahamas. And while Trinidad and Tobago is a twin island republic, the Bahamas, as it is said by some, actually has three thousand islands 
as one nation. Think about that. The Bahamas, the nation in the Caribbean that has the highest GDP, has six or three thousand islands. Three thousand islands that make up the Bahamas. And of those three thousand, twenty-nine of them are inhabited. Now, think of twenty-nine islands like Trinidad, like Tobago, like Grenada, like St. Vincent, like Barbados, like Antigua, like Barbuda, like Nevis. Twenty-nine islands that have all unified themselves into one political entity with one economy, one police force, one government. And the same model of the Bahamas can be taken for the entire Caribbean, where those 29 inhabited islands plus the 2,000 plus other islands or rocks or clays or whatever they may be, that shows you how unity can be achieved. But if the politicians on that level are either unwilling or unable to complete that vision, then we, as grassroots people, must begin to recognize the power in Caribbean unity. And so, Minister Farrakhan, within the last few months, he went to Jamaica. He was invited to the inauguration of Portia Simpson Miller. He met with... Edward Siaga with P.J. Patterson, both members of the government and the opposition, he was treated as a head of state. He was welcomed to St. Kitts by the Prime Minister, Dr. Denzel Douglas, and was invited to speak to the nation by the government. He went to Haiti and was received by the President of Haiti, along with Wyclef Ja in Haiti. He donated a water treatment plant that pumps 30,000 gallons of drinkable water every day. And in Antigua, again on arrival, we were welcomed by the government, the Prime Minister Fonda. The Prime Minister came to almost every event where Minister Farrakhan was. But not only did he meet with the Prime Minister, Brother Baldwin Spencer, who hosted us for dinner. He invited us to speak to a high school. He took us to a gala event for the national football team. And then the Prime Minister was seated at the front row at the occasion at the multi-purpose complex where we had the hall packed out, jam-packed to capacity with about 700 people on the outside. And Minister Farrakhan also met with the former Prime Minister and current leader of the opposition, Brother Lester Byrd. And with all of these Caribbean nations that he went to, and with all the nations in the Caribbean where Minister Farrakhan is received as a head of state himself, given the diplomatic treatment and courtesies. It was not quite the same in Trinidad. What is different? And this is what you need to ask yourself. What is different about the government of Trinidad and Tobago? That they had a policy of silence, did not want to give the minister diplomatic immunity, did not want to give the minister VIP treatment or access to the lounges of the airport, did not want to welcome Minister Farrakhan as a head of state, but all of the other governments, all of these other black governments in different parts of the Caribbean, the prime ministers and the opposition leaders, they roll out the red carpet for Minister Louis Farrakhan, but something about the government of Trinidad and Tobago, where they seemed to be reluctant, and I have to thank our dear brother, Winston Gypsy Peters, the Minister of Arts and Multiculturalism and Member of Parliament for Mayaro, for his courtesies and for his kindness in helping to make the event a success. We're also thankful to the leader of the opposition, Dr. Keith Rowley, who attended the event, but not only did he attend, but he also had a private meeting with Minister Louis Farrakhan, where I was right there listening to so much wisdom being shared. Also our brother, Senator Fitzgerald Hines. But something about Trinidad, I don't know. And we have to be wise about this. We cannot afford to be naive about these things. Minister Farrakhan's cook is from Haiti. She prepares all of his meals. She, in a sense, takes care of him and ensures his health. Minister Farrakhan is going to be 80 years next year, 80 years old. 
and he's still strong and brisk and fit and sharp, but he eats the right foods. He follows the program of how to eat to live by the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. But we got a call from the Trinidad Consulate saying that they needed a letter of invitation to let Minister Farrakhan's Haitian cook into Trinidad. So we sent the letter of invitation. Then they called us back and said, well, they need it on a letterhead. So we put it on a letterhead and sent it back to them. Then they said they needed it signed. So we printed it, we signed it, we faxed it off. Then they said they need another kind of invitation. When we sent that invitation to them, then we were told that they asked her for a bank statement, a marriage certificate, all different kinds of documentation that they felt were impossible to produce. And I am telling you that Trinidad and Tobago is a member of CARICOM. Haiti is also a member of CARICOM. And the government of Trinidad and Tobago refused to let a Haitian national who was a member of an international delegation into this country to accompany Minister Louis Farrakhan. But yet still, citizens from India and Russia could come here for 90 days with minimum documentation, but your own sister from Haiti, who was part of this delegation, was not let into the country by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. You have to think, black people. And so Minister Farrakhan's trip will continue within the next few weeks to Cuba, Grenada, St. Vincent, and Barbados. And the mission continues to unite black people all across the Caribbean region.